let's go ahead and get started here putting everything together so that way we can start using the volley library to fetch data on apis and we can show all that data inside of our applications before we do anything obviously let's go to google here because we need to see how to set up our volley library right so it says here it want me to say volley android on google you'll see there's a lot of information here there is the github link here where you can go and look at the actual code and all sort of things and to the right here we have this volley overview that says volley is an http library that makes networking very easy and fast for android apps so this library was created by Google, so the Google engineer team, they created this so that us developers have something easier to use to create HTTP requests and networking in Android. Very good. So what are we going to do here? Let's go to the GitHub first. So click on GitHub link there. It will give you the GitHub repository where all the code is. Okay, so we don't have to go through the code unless you want to. But usually we have information on readme. In this case here, it takes us to the Android developer training page. So essentially, it is going to be the same page as this at the top here. So I'm going to just click this one here. And voila, it gives us the information, the docs. Okay, so we are inside of developer.android.com training volley. So this should be a place where you should be familiar with, not just for the volley, but as you can see to the left here, there's a lot of information whenever you want to understand more about Android and how to use certain API or certain class and so forth. Okay, so from time to time, we are going to end up here. Very good. So the first thing we need to do here, as it says, we need to add a dependency. So the way we add libraries in our Android project is to actually call a dependency that we put inside of our Gradle. So think of Gradle as this entity or as this system that is inside of our Android Studio that allows us to put all sort of dependencies, if you will, libraries and all sort of things so that our application depends on them, if that makes any sense, right? So Gradle does more than what I just said. It does all sort of things in the background so that our application becomes an actual application, okay? So here, to do that, every time we want to add a library, we have to put that dependency. Essentially, is the namespace or the link where it can go it being the Gradle, can go and fetch all the information, the actual library, so we can start invoking in our code. So as it says here, I need to take this whole thing here. So we need to copy this. I'm going to say copy and go back to our code. And we need to go to our Gradle here. So if you click Gradle, there's a few Gradles here, right? So there's the project parsing Gradle, there's the module. Let's go to our module. So we'll go to our module build at Gradle here, you'll see there's other implementation, there's other libraries that are already added when we create our application. So when you come to our Gradle here, you can see we have these dependencies. So these dependencies already has some implementation of other dependencies that are needed, as I said, for our application. So you can see real quickly here that, for instance, we have this Android support app compact. Oh, remember this app compact? That is what we use for our activities. Remember our activity compact. If you come down here, you'll see we have this app compact activity there. So you can see, as I said before, this is where we implement, we add libraries or dependencies that are needed for our application to work. So there's a lot of things in our Gradle here, but most importantly is the dependencies as well as the actual compile SDK version. So like I said before, the Android system has different versions of Android. So here we can specify, for instance, what is the minimum SDK version. In this case, it's 19. The target version is 28 and we have version code and so many things, okay? So this information here, especially the version code and version name, it's gonna be very useful once we're ready to publish our application. Okay, so I digress. Let's come down here, we're gonna paste the compile code that we got from Volley, right? So now there is the Volley. I'm gonna say sync, so that Gradle goes ahead and rebuild the whole application to make sure that everything would actually work, okay? So it says here compile is obsolete and has been replaced with implementation. So this is the beauty of having our Gradle working here and our IDE because it tells us that certain things should be fixed before we go forward because this is the old way of doing it. So this also tells us that our friends at Google, they haven't really changed this. <laughs> it's okay. At least they're telling us now via our Android Studio. But anyway, so we're going to use implementation instead of compile. Okay. So I'm going to just say 
implementation of that, and I'm going to sync again, and I should be good. Very good. So now everything is up to date and life is good. Okay. So once we're done with that, I'm going to get rid of that and go back to our main activity here. All right, so now we are able to use our volley. But how do I know? Well, the one thing I like to do every time I have added a new library is that I come to the main activity here and I start typing, for instance, volley. The moment to do that, you can see we do have indeed access to volley, which comes from volley, that toolbox. So that's good. That's very good news. All right, so how do we then start using our volley? Well, first of all, we need to get an API. We need to have an API that we can tap into and see who can get JSON data out of it. Well, it turns out there are a lot of APIs on the web. One of the places that I always like to go to, make this a little bit bigger, is this place called jsonplaceholder.typecode.com. Okay, so this is a really nice website, as it says here. It's just a fake online REST API for testing and prototyping. So whenever we are just testing things, making sure that everything is working on our project and so forth, it's always nice to have a way in which we can actually find something to test with. So JSON placeholder is the place to go. Okay, there have different APIs here, for instance, they give an example here. This is an API that goes and gets a to do list. So if I go ahead and say try, look at that. And you can see here we have our JSON object with the user ID, ID, title, completed and so forth. Okay, very good. So congratulations, this is working very good. So now we can actually take this link here. I'm going to copy this. That's what we're going to be using to test things out in our project. So I'm going to just come it out and put it there. So we know. Okay. All right. So back to our Android setup here in Volley, we can scroll down and it will tell us exactly how to implement things, how to set up a request and so forth. So let's click on this one here, lesson number one, so we can see what it's supposed to do. So there we go. We have Kotlin and we have Java. We are concerned about Java because that's the language that we're using to create our Android applications. You can see a lot of things going on here. There's ways uh, that they show us how to do requests and everything. Okay. Now, understanding something very important here, you may also ask, okay, why is it so important that we use this library as opposed to any other library or even write ourselves everything? Like I said in the previous video, you can. In fact, if you go online, you can find all these different classes. You can just import and get them and learn about them, how you can actually do all this work yourself. But the problem with that is that you have to know what you're doing, right? So the beauty of libraries, I know I'm repeating myself here, but the beauty of libraries in Android or in any platform that you'll be working on is that it allows us to abstract out everything and we don't have to do the work that has already been done. All we do now is leveraging what people have done. And nonetheless, in this case, Android developers or Android engineers from Google or the ones who created it. So I'm pretty sure you could trust those guys because they're pretty smart. Okay. So also, the idea of HTTP requests and networking, it's such a huge topic. There's so many moving parts, especially when we put mobile development on top of that. Because now when you talk about mobile devices, we have scarcity of a lot of things. We don't have a lot of memory and people usually are on the move. Things could happen as your application is working, right? So we need to be careful as to how do we connect to the internet? How do we fetch things? If something happens to the internet or there's no connection, all of those things have to be set up in order for us to actually be okay, in order for our API calls and everything in our application work as we intended to work. Okay, so the beauty of using Volley, this particular library, is that it takes care of all of that for us. All we have to do is just learn how to use this class, this library, and we're set. We don't have to worry about caching, really. We don't have to worry about all these sort of things that we would have to be worried about if we had to do all of this by ourselves. Okay. Very good. So continuing here, there's all those different things that we can do, right? We will talk about singletons and all that stuff. But what we really want to do is to be able to just fetch something simple. So I'm going to go next here. So request a JSON. So when we request a JSON, we have JSON array request and we have JSON object request. Now, what is the distinctions between these two? All right. I'm glad you asked. Let's go back to our placeholder here. Okay. I'm going to go and find perhaps another point here. So this is an object, like I said. So we know that this is an JSON object. Why? Well, the reason why is because every time that you see these braces, 
all right, curly braces in closing data, that means it is indeed an object. That is a distinction. Now, there are times when we have something different. Let's go to posts, for instance. The moment you come to post, you can see to the left here, by the way, this is how JSON looks like on Chrome if you download the Chrome JSON plugin. So if you type on Google Chrome JSON extension, I should say, not plugin extension, you should find that and then download, then you're going to be able to see like this. Otherwise, it's just going to be a one line and that's not going to be very beautiful and easy to read. Going back, so you can see here, I know that this is not necessarily an object, this whole thing here. Why? Because it is indeed an array. Why is it an array? Because we have these square brackets, as you can see there, okay? So that means now that this whole payload here of posts at this point here, it shows objects inside of an array. So because we know this is an object, because we have curly braces, if in fact, if you close down, you can see you can actually open up and close it. So that is indeed an object. So that is very important to understand now because whatever the root is, in this case, we know the root is going to be a JSON array. Hence, we have to, in this case, always start using the JSON array request because we're saying we are requesting a JSON array, not a JSON object. Because again, we know by looking at the root of everything is indeed an array, right? However, if I go back here and say like this, you can see right away I have this instance there. Or if I go down here to to do's and I do the same thing as we did before, we saw just put something like one and enter, we're just going to get one, which is indeed an object. Okay, those are small things that I want to show you the difference between JSON array request and JSON object request. And of course, you will see the differences as we keep learning about how to parse data from an API. Okay, enough about that. Let's keep going here. So now we're going to set up a JSON object request, as you see here, that will allow us to get our information data from the API, and then we can see what's inside of it. So we'll be able to say, for instance, I want to get user ID or ID or title or completed. Okay, depending on which endpoint I've decided to use, could be posts, could be comments, doesn't matter. Very good. So let's go ahead and do that in the next video, because this video is getting a little bit too long. All right, I'll see you next.